for you to hear something or do something before it becomes a habit. I don't know if that's true, but I'm just saying what they say, whoever they are. But here's something that you need to realize. It does not matter where you messed it up. It only matters where you end up in the kingdom of God. And God has prepared a way for you and I. God has a plan for you and I. You've heard that before, Jeremiah 29 and 11, that God said, I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. The only way we don't ever come in to the plans that God has for us is when we do our plan instead of his plan. All right, come on, I'm feeling good up in this house this morning. I will rejoice and be glad. But I want you to understand that from the beginning of time, that the Father of all creation, God himself, had a plan. He wanted a people, he wanted a family, and he wanted them to come and live with him forever. That he sent his son, when Adam messed it up, he sent his son to redeem you and to pay you back so that you could Whatever that was, the, the monitor just worked. Well, anyway, he redeems you and I. If it happens again, I don't know. Amen. Praise God. Preach on. But he came to redeem you and I so that we could have a way out. Now, I want you to get this concept together right now. John 15, I mean 17. Go with me to verse number 9. This is... How many of y'all ever heard the Lord's Prayer? People think that Matthew chapter 6 is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven. How many of you know that is not the Lord's Prayer? How many of y'all know that? Is this still on? I can't hear out there, so if y'all tell me, I just, I don't know what's going on with our sound. But here's the thing. The Lord's Prayer is not the Our Father which art in heaven. That's the prayer that the Lord spoke to the disciples for them to pray. So if we really wanted to call it what it is, it would be the disciples' prayer that the Lord said, pray in this manner. But when you come to the Lord's Prayer, the Lord's Prayer is in John chapter 17. And in John chapter 17, beginning in verse 9, you hear the first two words is Jesus speaking in words of red, and he says this, I pray. If Jesus prayed, what makes you think you're not going to have to pray? But let's move on because I want you to get the idea here before we shut down today. Here's the word of God in chapter 9. He said, I pray for them. I pray not the, for the world, but for them that which thou hast given me. He's praying for his disciples. In Matthew chapter 6, I believe, he taught the disciples how to pray and by the word of the Lord. But now in John 17, he's telling God, I'm praying for the disciples to do what I've called you to do. How many of you know? Well, let me go on before I say that. He said, I pray for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine. Here's what, hear me now. The disciples were Jesus. And he, he, go on down to verse number 11. He said, and now I am no more in the world, but they are still in the world. And I am come to thee, holy Father. Keep thou thine own name, those whom thou hast given me. Here's the line right here. Watch this, mark it in your Bible, write it down in your notepad. He said, I am. I am now no more in the world, but these are still in the world. How many of y'all are still in the world? Pinch your neighbor if you're still in the world. Here's the problem, he says. He said, them whom thou hast given me, that they may be what? Come on, shout it out. That they may be, that they may be, that they may be. There you go. You're getting there. You, he said that they may be one, but he doesn't stop there. What does he say? As we are one. Now, I want you to take just a minute, and I want you to contemplate that as we are one. The whole idea for Jesus when he began to pray for the disciples is not that they be in agreement one with another. Are y'all with me? Is that all right? I'm going to take this off. I'm sweating now. He's not, it was not his plan for them to be in agreement only. He wanted them to be. 
He taught them to be. They went everywhere with him. They stayed with him. They ate with him. They, they slept around the, where he was at. Everywhere he was, they, they, they were. But his desire when he began to pray was not that they were one. It would be that they would be one as, Father, you and I are one. I submit to you this morning that you need to get a hold of this concept of oneness. We are the one in Jesus Christ. God's promise from the beginning was that his family would dwell with him in heaven throughout eternity. That's why when you and I pass from this life to the next, if we have lived the life according to the word of God, if we are blood bought and we are saved by the Holy Ghost, I mean by the blood of Jesus, how many of you know that we have the assurity of the word of God that when we breathe our last breath, we have not breathed our last breath, but we are going to eternity to spend all of eternity with the one that loves you, with the one that saved you, one that gave his life for you, and the one that loves you so much that he wants you with him forever in eternity. He wants you as he is one with the Father. So from the beginning of Genesis, the concept of oneness was issued when Adam came. But yet as Adam fell, Jesus fulfilled that role the second time. And he became the second, as we refer to, the second Adam. But this Adam would not fail. He would succeed in being what God called him to be on the earth. You and I need to realize that God wants us to be one with him as Jesus was one with him. How did that happen? How was that? What was that about? How did that look like? In the garden that Jesus is praying and the Bible said that his blood became as sweat. I mean, his sweat became his blood, they say. But what did Jesus pray in the garden? Father, if there be any way, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, thy will be done. It's not about your will. It's not about my will. It's not about what I want and you want. It's about what does God want. And I'm here to tell you that God wants his people on the earth to rise up and be his representative and to live the life of God that he's called for us to be no matter what everybody else thinks and no matter what it looks like to everybody else. You and I are called to live a different way. If you thought you got saved so you can live just like you used to live, you didn't get saved. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. Let me understand that. One, 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 one. Let me read on just a minute. Go on down to verse uh, 21. Three times in this chapter you hear this phrase. He said, uh, well, let me go back to 20. Skip back to 20 if you can, Angie. Put it on the screen. Jesus prays. Let me help you real quick. In my Bible it says this. In in John chapter 17, verse 1, 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself. In chapter, I mean, verse 6, all the way to verse 19, he prays for his disciples. But you get over into verse chapter 20, and here's where you and I check in right here. This, over my Bible, it said, Jesus prays for all believers. How many of you know that's you and me this morning? And verse 20 says, Neither do I pray for these alone, talking about the disciples. He said, but also for them which shall believe on me through their word. I'm not praying for the disciples only that I just finished praying for. I'm not praying for myself that I prayed for in the first few chapters. He said, no, now I come to pray for them which also shall believe on me through their word. And he goes on to say that they may all be one. There it is again. As thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And let's read verse 22 in conclusion. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given to them, that thou mayest be one even as we are one. But wait, back up to verse 22 one more time. And the glory which you gave me. Do y'all see that? He said, I have given them. Who? He was talking about the disciples, but now he's talking about the believer. 
In other words, that God has a glory that he, that he gave to his son Jesus. And Jesus wants to give that glory to all that believe in him. That's you and me. How many of you know he's not, we're not going to share God's glory, but the glory here is an, an, an empowerment, like an anointing, if you will. But it's not that we can be greater than God, but it's that we can be like him. Because the concept that God has is for you and for I to be one they are one. How many of you say amen to that? Now, how many of you know when you got married, if you got married, and you didn't get married in a fever, hotter than a pepper sprout, just seeing who knows that. Every one of y'all thinking about a man in black right now. If you know, the truth shall set you free. If you got married, you heard this line probably. And the two shall be come one. Guess where they got that from? The concept of God from the beginning. It's not good for a man to be alone. So he makes Eve. And he puts Eve together. Then he goes and he goes, he establishes a, I'm sorry to say it, I know we're not on Facebook Live right now, maybe we are, I don't know, Angie's back there now, but I'm here to tell you, it's not Adam and Steve, it's not Adam and Bob, it's not Adam and Bert, it's not Bob, it's not Adam and, oh, it's Adam and Eve, it was that way from the beginning, it'll be that way with God till the end, I don't care what the world says, I don't care what the politicians say, I don't care what your boss or your school says, God set it up that we would be a man and a woman, and the two shall come together and be one but God still had the same a desire for his people for his believers to become one with him and if you're not going to be there you might as well back up and punt and get ready to do it again because God wants you to be one now, how many of you know like a marriage you don't just automatically be one any of y'all got married and all of a sudden y'all just look like each other talk like each other think like each other do you know in the Jewish, sorry I missed that darling, do you know in the Jewish community, when the Jewish men back in the old days and the women would get married, they didn't have to go to work for a year? Y'all know that? Did y'all know that? In the Jew, now I don't know if it's still carried on today, but when the weddings were set up in the old Jewish days, there was dowry given for the, for the, for the, for the wife. And then there was, uh, the, the husband would work to prepare a place. And the husband would have it all planned out. But when they began to say their marriage vows, you need to realize that they did not work. They did not go out. They did not go to a job for one year. Why? Because they worked on being one with each other. My God, would you get this? What would happen in the church if you got saved? And for one year after you got saved, you didn't have to do anything but stay in your house, read your Bible and talk to your God and begin to fellowship with him for a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. Now somebody just probably said, I'd be bored. No, you would not. You would be well, thoroughly connected and understanding your spouse or your God, whichever the case may be. But you need to understand this. <laughs> I'm not going to have time to finish all of this tonight and, or today, and I didn't think it would anyway, but here's the deal. Go with me now to Ephesians chapter 4. I might have to preach this in series. I've never preached a series before, but I see this might have to be. But I'm going to give you the whole point of it today because i got to get the point that God gave me to it. Look at this, verse chapter 4 of Ephesians. Oh, somebody say, here it is, Lord. Chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse number 1. Here's the thing. He said, therefore, I, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation. That word means calling, the vocation. That word does not mean the job. That word means the calling, the anointing, the gifting, the, the calling. He said, I, to beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling where, where you are called, with all lowliness, with all meekness, with all longsuffering, and for all forbearance together for one another in love, in love, in love, in love. How do we become one with the Father? We fall in love with him. How do we become one with the Son? We realize that what he gave was out of ultimate supreme love, that he sacrificed it all. And nobody else ever done what Jesus did to set 
set you and I free. Ain't nobody ever going to do what Jesus did to make you free, keep you free, or set you free. Honey, I'm here to tell you, we thank God for the military that gave their life. We thank God for the men and women that have given and sacrificed so we could be free. And we see those freedoms being taken from us every day off of this crazy political myth. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God has still established it. And it will never change in his word that he has called us to be free and to be in love with him and to be unified with him and to be connected with him. He wants us to be one with him as he is one with his father. There is no separation between Jesus and God. There should be no separation between you and your father God. If the devil can slide something in and separate you, he's done his job and you failed to continue in the way that God has called you to be. Somebody said, well, I can't afford to pay tithes. You can't afford not to. Somebody said, I can't afford to pray. You can't afford not to. Somebody said, I can't afford to go to church. You can't afford not to. Come on, somebody. He said that we need to walk together. Look at this. Forbearing one another, verse 2, with all lowliness, all meekness, all long-suffering, all long-suffering, all long-suffering. How many of you know you've got somebody in this house, you've got somebody in your house, you've got somebody at your job that you can't handle? You don't like, you can't deal with, but God has commanded you. Do you think that Jesus liked what the, what the soldiers did to him before he was crucified? Crucified? Do you think that he loved being nailed on a cross, suspended between heaven and earth, hanging there in nothing probably but his loincloth, and yet blood dripping down, and all of the pain and the sorrow of the time? I don't care what it is. There's no MMA fighter or boxer that has ever had their body disfigured like Jesus had. I don't care how much face beating they endure with the boxing and the kicking. I'm here to tell you, no man has ever been marred more than Jesus was, and he did it so you and I I could be one with him and we cannot afford to let the devil come in and separate us from our father. Y'all need to go tell somebody y'all missed it today. And I'm not even halfway through with my third, so I ain't even gotten to my second, third point yet. He said, look, and here's the thing. That's why I said a while ago, you need to tell the devil, nana, nana, devil. Amen. Can't touch this. No, 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 you know. I dated myself, didn't I? Here's the thing. What separated Jesus from the Father? Nothing. 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 Now, there was a moment in the garden, I told you about it a minute ago, where Jesus said, Lord, if it be your will, this cup is heavy. This way is hard. Have any of y'all ever thought that way? Amen. Lord God, that co-worker that I have, that they're, they're a pain in my behind. Amen. That wife or that husband I live with. Yeah, it couldn't get no help. Everybody went silent on that one, didn't y'all? Like, no, I'm sitting beside him. I ain't saying nothing today. You on your own, because. But have me even understand. Let me ask you a question again. Whatever separated Jesus from the Father? Nothing that I know of. There is no separation. But yet, when Jesus prays for his disciples, he prays that they be one as we are one. When he prays for his believers, that's you and I and all of those that will follow. That's also your kids and your grandkids. That's also your mom and your dad and your grandma and your grandma if they're still living. Why? Jesus created this thing with the term of oneness or with the idea of oneness. Hey, come on, somebody. You need to realize that that is what God had in store from the beginning. And it is God, what God wants to begin or to be from the end. Hello. One, 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 say it with me, one, in Jesus' name. Let me go back real quick. I wanted to get, I, I left the scripture off. And I, well, I forgot, I guess I didn't write it down. But let me even know. Wait a minute, it's Ephesians 4. Thank you, Lord. It's Ephesians chapter 4. There you go. Go with me to verse 4. Well, let me read verse 3. I'll come back to that in a minute, maybe. But let me even know, what did he say? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit... In the bond of peace, there is what? Read it with me. Highlight it. Mark it down. He said there is one body. There's one spirit. There's one Lord. Verse 5. There's one faith. There's one baptism. 
There's one God and Father of all who is above all, who is through all, and who is in you all. Hallelujah. Somebody, I felt that just hit me there. Ah, glory to God. How many of you understand? There's not going to be a Baptist heaven. There's not going to be an American heaven and an African heaven. There's not going to be a Catholic heaven. There's not going to be a Pentecostal heaven. There's not going to be a black Jesus. There's not going to be a white Jesus. There's not going to be an Asian Jesus. Yes, I did say it. There's not going to be an Oriental Jesus. Have you know there is one God, there is one Lord, there is one Father. And until we all come together in the unity of faith, we're never going to get to the oneness of the, con of the con concept that God had. You and I need to realize that it's our job not to let anything or anyone separate us from the love of God. Yet how many times does a doctor's diagnosis separate? How many times does one failed relationship separate us? How many does one unanswered prayer <laughs> separate us? Bless God, he didn't heal my grandmother. I prayed and she didn't get healed and I don't even believe there is a God no more. And the devil's sitting back going, <laughs> we got him. Hello, somebody. Are y'all hearing me this morning? We are one. We want to, God wants us, Jesus prayed. God wants us to be one. There's an old, old, old song. I'm going to date myself one more time. Song, there's an old song by a guy named Russ Tapp. Said, we are my brother, you're my sister. So take me by the hand. How many of y'all know that song? If you shake your head yes right now, I know how old you are. Amen. He said, together we will work until he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side. To get, as long as there is love, we will stand. That's the words of the song. How many of you know football teams and baseball teams and basketball teams and whatever other team today can join together for the unity of the, of the, of the, of the nationalities? You know, all black lives matter, all this matter. And they join together arm in arm, walk out on the field and stand unified. How many of you know, would to God that the church again become unified in the anointing of God and the things of God that we could stand arm in arm and you yoke ourselves together and be called the one body of Christ so you don't believe it exactly like I do who cares do you believe that there's one God one Lord do you believe that Bible uh, let me just meddle for a minute okay I'm trying to check my time real quick I got eight minutes I was looking on Facebook last night and there was a a pretty table runner. How many of you know what a table runner is? Fellas, what you don't may not know is that's that little piece of cloth that's about this wide and it runs across the middle of the table from one end to the other. Girls, y'all know what I'm talking about. There was a pretty one over advertised on Facebook and it was, by, it, was, it, was, it was just pretty. And I showed it to Angie. I said, I'd like to have this because it's depicted... It depicted uh, Isaiah's prophecy of the, of the coming Messiah. And it was a little picture. And then it went to the next picture. How many of y'all ever been to one of them booths and you sit down with your buddy and you take a picture and it spits out about four or five pictures? You know, you go to the fair or wherever to the mall. And it, well, anyway, that's what that runner looked like. It had about six pictures. And it had uh, Isaiah uh, depicted as to prophesying the Messiah. Then it had uh, 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 Mary and Joseph in the birth of Jesus. Then it had the glory of God with the shepherds. And then it had the, uh, uh, the, the wise men coming. And then it had, uh, I can't remember, there was a couple of more. And all of them were around the tablecloth. It had the names of God, the Holy One, the Righteous One, the Healer, the Deliverer, the Savior. And it was really nice. And it was put out by a company called I Am Israel. I don't know if you, IamIsrael.com.org, I don't know. I'm not advertising it. But what got me the most was that people begin to argue on the internet about whether it was a legitimate thing of God or not to buy that thing. The, the Jewish people were saying that, you know, we don't celebrate Christmas, and they don't, and that's fine. We know that Jesus was not born on December 25th. If you believe that, you need to do some research. He would have never been born in the cold months in the middle of an open field. He would have been born in the fall, September, October, somewhere. But nonetheless, instead of coming together and saying, wow, that's a beautiful picture of artwork that would look good on my table, there were people that got on that thing and wanted to discuss doctrine. And all the time I'm reading, and I'm showing it to Angie, and I said, look at this mess. Listen at this mess. And I know there's a place for argument or debate, if you will, or discussion. But honey, you and I need to realize God 
God wants us to come together, not fall apart. He wants us to unite, not pull it down. He wants us to build up, not tear down. We are called to be one in the name of Jesus. Some of y'all need to just go home and kiss your husband or your wife and say, I just love you so much. I want to be, just to be close to you, girl. Y'all remember that old, oh, there go I dating myself again. Here's what the Lord gave me. There's one God. There's one Lord. There's one faith. That's why I can partner with Brother Robert to see God, see his, his vision. That's why we can partner with you guys about seeing God's vision accomplished in you. I don't care about being a big name on TV. If God elevates us to be on TV, so be it. But I'll be looking for somebody that I can raise up, that I can lift up, that I can encourage, that I can build up. Why? It's not about Keith. It's never been about Keith. It won't ever be about me. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the kingdom of heaven. It's all about the glory of God. And it's all about his word being spread in the earth. And if you get, never mind, I'll, I'll lay off of that. Here's what the Lord said. We are called to be one. Here's the thing, one, one God, one Lord, one faith. And I wrote this down, the Lord said, one people, one purpose, and one place. And then the Lord said this this morning, he added it to it. He said, the one people is you and me. The place is here right now in Graceville. And the purpose is God's vision for his kingdom in this area. We're about you and me. It ain't about you or me, it's about you and me. Jesus said it, I pray that they be one as we are one. There is no separation of the Father and the Son. Even when Jesus had, I mean, when God had to turn his back not to look on his Son because God couldn't see, look upon death, but when Jesus hung on that cross, how many of you understand he didn't go to that grave and stay there longer than three days? Because on that third day, the son of righteousness, the king of kings and lord of lords, came up out of that grave because the father had endued him with new power to raise him to resurrection. Why? So that he could complete the mission and fulfill the will so that you and I can have a way to come into the house of God today and say, thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your love, and your grace. And thank you, Lord, that when I messed it up, you were not concerned about it. But thank you, God, that I'm becoming more like you every day. And if we're not moving closer to him, then we have let something stop us from getting one, becoming one with him. And here's the Bible says this. Watch this. Now, be wise. Have you ever known the Bible said a man's foes? Anybody know the rest of it? A man's foes are of his own house. And that's why your husband and your kids can get to you quicker than anybody else. Wake up, read the scriptures. It's right there. The devil's not that smart. But he is good at being a bad devil. We say it all the time. And he knows how to slide in and put that. You know what? Matter of fact, I wish Chris was here. I didn't know this the other while. Well, I should have known it, but I didn't. The other day, we were, work, we were working on the well out here trying to get more water pressure. And I was going to go throw the breaker and kill the power to the breaker. You know what Chris did? Chris took a little piece of sandpaper, tore it off, and he stuck it between the contacts so they couldn't touch. And he reached over there and adjusted the thing. And I thought, well, that was pretty smart. Because I would have traped all the way back over from the well over there, all the way back up and found the power box, flipped the breaker, walked all the way back, worked on the well, and then walked all back up there. And all the time Chris said, hold on just a minute. And he just stuck it, never left. And he you know what? He didn't have to do anything but stick that piece of paper between them contacts. And here's the point, or the, the issue. <laughs> when those contacts did not connect, they didn't transfer electricity, and there was no power. The devil can slide something in between your life with your walk with God. He disconnects the power source from you, and you won't walk in power of an authority. Hold on, Brother Bowen, keep going. Amen. All he has to do is slide one thing between you. All he has to do is slide one issue. Well, I've been worried about this for 50. And the Bible said, why do you worry? You can't change one thing about you while worrying. That's why you need to, Angie's daddy used to say it like this. Angie's daddy said, just throw your head back and laugh at the devil. <laughs> when the devil attacks you, you just need to, you look crazy to the world, but they know you're a fool anyway. Paul said, if I'm going to be a fool, I'm going to be one for 
I'm just waiting to see if y'all know it. Let me, let me finish this. We are one. If, you, if it's not you, then who? If it's not now, when? If it's to be, it's up to you and me. How many of y'all know that? It's up to us. The only way we can do it is to be more like Jesus. To be, how do I be more like Jesus? I pray, number one. I read his word, number two. How many more games of Saga Candy Crush do you need to play? Hello, and I'm not against you playing your game. I'm just saying, how many more times you're going to keep doing the same thing? And then when you come to church, you go, I don't know what God don't do with that, but pray. Because you, you ain't connected with it. That little piece of paper is between the points and the contacts on the pump switch in your life. Amen? But when you take that piece of paper out and that connection is made, there's a transfer of power. There's a transfer of anointing. You know what? I, 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 when, I, I got to tell you when, uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you that later. Let me say that. Here's the thing. I'm getting back to this. This is where I'm headed maybe next week if the Lord would allow. It's time. This is what the Lord said. We must remember our hour. It's, we must remember our, our, our hour. We've come into the kingdom of heaven for such a time as this. We've been gifted to be here in Graceville at this season and this time. We've been called not just to sit in the church pew, but we've been called to go out to the highways and the hedges and do what? Compel them to come in, said the Lord. You say, well, Brother Keith, they're not living right. You know what? If, you go, if you're sick, there ain't no well people going to the hospital unless they're going to visit sick people. Amen. We want folks that are sick. We want folks that are addicted. We want folks that are hung up. Why? Because that's why we can share the gospel with them. And we need to go out of the, out of the doors and do the same. But have you know, it is our, we must remember, this is my whole point. There, matter of fact, on the school buses in Bay County, I don't know about up here, there's a button that we have to get up and go to the back of the bus and push this little button. And so if you don't push the button, the alarm will go off and sound, and it won't quit until you turn the key back on, back off, and go back and push the button. That button is called a no child left behind button. In other words, but drivers have to get up and go back to the bus, and that way and push that button, you will see if there's a child sleeping in the seat. How many of you understand the military and the police have that same mindset? No man left behind. No soldier left on the battlefield. And I'm here to tell you, I've adopted that into the house of God today. Not a one of you get to be left on the devil's battlefield because I am in his, this house and you are in this house and we're one with another looking out for each other. I'm not interested. You may fall and go down, but honey, you're not going to stay down. I'm not going to let you go down. If you stay connected to the house of God and you stay connected to the word of God, and you stay connected to the promise of God, I'm going to be and we're going to be there to help you get up every time you fall because we're leaving nobody behind. Because Jesus said it's time for us to be one. Now let me close this out. If the Lord will allow me, here are my three points that may come in the next few weeks. I say may because I don't know what God has. The first point today is we must be one. You may not like what I do. You may not like how I talk. I may not like what you wear. It ain't about none of that stuff. It's about that we are joined together for such a time as this for the kingdom of God's sake. We are connected, so we need to be one. The second thing, and I'll touch on it later, is we need to be united. Hello? Philippians, I mean, excuse me, Psalms, Psalms. Did you hear that? Y'all missed it, Psalms. Psalms 133 says how good and how pleasant it is for men to dwell together in unity. For therein is the commanded blessing of the Lord. I ain't got time to preach it, but I'm going to give it to you just so you can look at it later. You need to realize when men come together in unity, according to Psalms 133, that there's not just a blessing released from heaven. No, no, no. You need to read it. There is a commanded blessing of heaven released. And when God commands a blessing, you you need to realize no devil in hell is ever going to stop a commanded blessing of God. I can bless you with money. I can bless you with good comment. And my blessing, my, I could send you money in the mail. It might not get there. But honey, you need to realize when God issues a commanded blessing from heaven, there is no devil that can stop a commanded blessing. And it only comes when we walk together in unity, Psalms 133. 
And so the last third point I'll address later is that God calls us to be the remnant. Any of y'all ever heard this before? One united remnant. And the Lord spoke to me. This, the, we came up here Friday to wash the, tr the, the trailer down as best we could. And the Lord said, don't forget our O-U-R. Don't forget your one united remnant. You may sit over here, and you may sit over here, and you may sit right there. But we're united in this house today. And if you ain't united with the ones in this house, you need to get saved and healed and delivered. If you don't like somebody in this house, you know, back in my neck of the woods, back when I was a kid, we'd have these church services ever so often that people on this side of the church would get under Holy Ghost conviction, and they'd go over here and hug people on this side of the church, and they would say, please forgive me. I've had all against you because of this, that, and the other, and I want to make it right. The people on this side go to them and them, and we had everybody just loving and hugging everybody. Have you understand when that kind of stuff happens, that devil can't stand it, and hell every time because there is no bond like the bond of love and unity to the things of God. Uh, somebody say one united remnant. Don't forget our hour. It is my goal and if and I, I, matter of fact I'm commissioning somebody right now. Whoever one of y'all lives on people praise worship center the most I don't care who you are on that little website, there's a couple of you I could name, I'm sure. I need everybody in this house to get a shirt size because we're going to try to produce our shirts for everybody to have in this church. Because you need to go out of this house with O-U-R on your, on your shirt. And on the back, it's going to say, One United Remnant. And when you get mad with your brother, you just turn around and look in the, rear, in the mirror of your bathroom. And read the back of your shirt and get all right with your brother. Because here's what it is. We're never going to settle. We're, not, we're never going to be successful if we don't unite. Hello? We'll never be successful if we don't unite. But when we come together, Psalms 133, look at, there it is on the screen. How pleasant, how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Go down and let them see. I think it's verse 6 or 5. There's only 3 or 4, 7 verses, I think. Can you skip down? Uh, go 3, 4, 5. It says, How brother, dwell together in union, for therein is the commanded. It's like the dew on the mountain. It's like the oil on Aaron's beard, the Bible says. But it's, it's the commanded blessing. Y'all want a commanded? <clears throat> you want a commanded blessing of God? I don't want just a blessing. I want a commanded blessing. How many of y'all remember Daniel? I'm, I'm trying to quit. There, go, go down a little more. How many of y'all remember Daniel in the lion's den? And the Bible said he prayed, and 21 days later, the answer came. The answer was not denied. It was held up. Your answer is not denied. It's held up. Because the enemy's trying to make you think it ain't coming. But just like that little piece of paper in the contact, all God's got to do is remove that hindrance and the blessings of God are going to flow. When we get together in unity, there it is. For the Lord commanded the blessing, even life evermore. Verse 3. How many of y'all see that today? Say it with me. One united remnant. Look at your neighbor and say, you may not like me, but you united to me. Hello? You may not like me, but I, we united together. We yoked in the Holy Ghost by the blood of Jesus, and there's nothing worse that the devil would hate when we walk in unity. So this is what the Lord said. We must never forget our O-U-R, our. Because our, our, our one united remnant is now. How many of you know what a remnant is? A remnant is what's left over. In the Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 26, I'll give you this real quick, and I'll quit right here. Somebody say amen. Thank God he's quit. Amen. Hebrews 12 and 26. Would you go there real, 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 real quick? And I'm just going to give you my scripture, and you can read it if you want to. You can see what, you can see what the sermon would have been if I would have got to all of it. Somebody say amen to that. 12, 26, Hebrews says, Whose voice then shook the earth. And now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more will I shake not only the earth only, 
but heaven. How many of you know the Bible said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. How many of you know when God puts his foot on the Mount of Olives and he steps down to receive his own, how many of you know there's going to be a shaking? And that will be the once more shaking. But here's what the Lord says in this verse. He said, Yet once more will I shake not the heavens only but the earth. And the word, this word, yet once more uh, signifies the removing of things that are shaken. Are you with? Oh, there's a ladybug crawling on my finger. Great day in the morning. I felt something. And look at that. Yet once more, this signifies the removing of the things that are shaken, as of the things as as of the things that are made. That those things which cannot be shaken shall remain, or may remain. In other words, like the old song said, there's a whole lot of shaking going on, but God is looking for those that will stand the gap, that will stand the shaking, that will stand the thundering voice. How many of you know we are not going to do anything but remain? We're going to stand together, we're going to stand united, and we're going to remain through all the mess that the devil has to come against it. Even death itself cannot separate you from the glorious reward of heaven that God has given to you through the blood of his son Jesus. Can anybody? Say amen. Say it with me. One united remnant. Stick your hands up in the air and begin to bless the Lord in the house this morning. Hallelujah, Father God, we give you praise. Give me, let me give you one more. I, I, I just want to give you one more. I got two or three more, but I'm going to give you one more. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 15, 58. You need to write this in your Bible if you don't, if you mark in your Bible. 1 Corinthians, I was going to let you go, but I can't let you go without this one because it's too good. Have y'all had enough Bible today? I've given you a lot of word more than I usually do today, but it's all good for you. You can never have enough, amen? Angie's Uncle Wendell used to say, if you get too much of the Spirit of God and not enough Word of God, you'll blow up. If you get too much Word of God and not, a spirit of, not enough Spirit of God, you'll dry up. So the best thing is to have enough the Word of God and Spirit of God, and you'll be level, balanced. 1 Corinthians, and I'm done. Chapter 15, verse number 58. Are you there? Therefore, my brethren, my beloved brethren, be you what? Does that sound like remain, remnant? Yes? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Be un. Move above. Always, what is the word? Do you know what that word means? I love it when I found this out. I didn't know it, it meant all of this, but do you know it means to excel? It means to increase. Y'all see that? It means to increase. Y'all been saying it before I ever got here. Increase on the buckets right there. It means to excel. It means to increase, and guess what it means? To remain. In other words, be steadfast, be unmovable, always remain in the work of the Lord. In other words, don't be separated from your father. Don't be separated by the devil from your faith and your love and your connection with God, your creator, the giver of life. How many of you hear me this morning? Because if you're separated now, and the devil devours you, one day you're going to be separated for eternity. And that ain't the day you want to see come. Somebody say, always steadfast, unmovable, remaining in the work of the Lord. Stand to your feet. I'm done tonight. Today, excuse me. One, 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 united, 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 remnant. What did the preacher preach today? One, united, rem remnant. What did the preacher preach today? One united remnant. See, it's on that sign right there. One united rhythm, remnant. Rhythm. Did you hear that rhythm? One united remnant. You need to go home and remember this this morning. We're called to be together. You say, well, there's some of us ain't here today, but we're still together. They just didn't come today, amen? So let's bless the Lord. Would you say that? Father, I thank you for your word. God, I declare, oh, Jesus, thank you. I declare that this word goes forth to the hearers in this house this morning. Lord, I declare that one united remnant will be branded into our hearts 
and our minds. God, you gave it to me when I came here, and God, it's going to be evident through all the time that we are here, God. Until you come back to get us, Father God, we still desire to remain one united remnant together, God. Though we may rub elbows and not agree on everything, though we may not see it eye to eye always, God, we desire that, Jesus, you prayed for us in John 17, and God, we declare that your prayers will be answered to the fullness, and we will not allow the enemy in any way, shape, or form. If we fall, God, we get back up. Your word said, if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. And I declare that right now, God, that we can get back up. It is time to turn this thing around and see us work for the kingdom and see this thing fulfilled for the glory of God. And in the name of Jesus right now, Father God, I feel the unction of the Holy Ghost to say, once again, I call from the north, the south, the east, and the west for the people of God to come to this house, to be here, to build this kingdom. I declare that divine manifestation, strategies, and plans be developed in the hearts and minds of your people, your servants, not just in me only, the pastor. I declare that God, our kinfolk, our children, our loved ones will be saved down to a thousand generations. I declare that the lost will come in. I declare that the drug addict will be set free. I declare that everyone with an addiction all over the sound of my voice and across this area and this land will hear the voice of the Lord and say, I've come to be fulfilled and set free and released from that addiction. That that stronghold of the enemy is broken by the blood of Jesus. I release it now and I say no doubt devil in hell will stop what the word of God has to to declare and that we will see the glory of God accomplished in this house forever in the name of Jesus and I give you glory and I give you praise for it in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said amen say it with me again one (laughs) bet you can't guess where I'm going united (laughs) remnant you, this day, you're going to walk out of this house. Somebody said, what did the preacher preach? If you don't get that right, I'm going to take a gold star off of your name. I'm going to take it off. Hey, Amen. Somebody say that God is good. See, God gave you this word this morning, and I hope you understand. His concept from the beginning was that we be one as he and, and the Father are one. Amen. So when you have a trouble this week, just remember God's on your side. Jesus is working it out for your good. Maybe it don't look like it right then, but it's going to happen. Amen. Well, I'm going to give you a chance to give real quick in the name of the Lord. Father, we ask you for your blessings on the giver in this house right now. Father, we thank you. It's not about the amount, Father God. It's about the attitude of the heart. And I declare that, God, you're giving seed to the sower, not seed to the thrower. But, God, you give seed to the sower. God, we pray that we will be sowers of good seed in good ground to bring good harvest for your name's sake. Now, God, we declare, put those scriptures up there for me, Angel. We declare Luke 6.38 and Malachi (laughs) 3.10. Father, that trailer that's across the way there is an evident blessing of the open window of heaven. That potential van that will come, God, is an, uh, an answer to an open window of heaven blessing. Father, favor for business deals, favor for businesses to increase and and rise up and be established, God, is a sign, a direct sign of open window of heaven. So we decree the word of the Lord in this house today. Luke 6, 38 says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Come on, help me, somebody. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give to your bosom. For with the same measure you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. My favorite, Malachi 3.10, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse where there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not, what? Open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it in Jesus' name. Maybe you want to take these scriptures and post them on your mirror at the house and read them every day. Amen. So I'm going to give you a chance to give this morning. If you will, uh, come and bring your gifts of love. And as we do, as always, we say increase. Angie, can you do that? God's going to turn it around from back there. You can't, can you? got to come up here. Well, we'll just let it play. Can I play it from here? No, I can't because I disconnected the cord. Well, anyway, God's going to turn it around. Let's say increase. Bring your offerings of love this morning. Thank you for your faithfulness. I pray that you be one with God this week like he wants us to be. Amen. You're dismissed. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead.